Good evening, everyone, and happy Hanukkah. It's the last night of Hanukkah. And I would like to um, show with you some Torah study, especially with the teachings of the Rebbe on this week's portion. This week we begin the portion of, we study the portion of Miketz. It is about Joseph is still in prison. Two years later, um, a pharaoh had a nightmare a full of dreams. He had two dreams. The first dream is about seven fat, big cows, and they are being swallowed by seven thin and skinny cows. He goes back to bed and he wakes up and he sleeps and he dreams of a seven ears of corn that are full and healthy. And then suddenly a very skinny seven ears of corn that are growing next to them, swallow them and they disappear. He's very distraught in the morning. He has no clue what is the purpose of that dream. What is that supposed to mean? And nobody can help him. And finally, the, the butler, the minister of, uh, in charge of uh, providing uh, wine and drink for the king, they remember that uh, it was a dream interpreter in jail many years ago, two years earlier. And they bring him and Yosef, Joseph, explains the dream and Pharaoh is impressed, so impressed that he says there is no one as smart as you are and he appoints him as the viceroy to Egypt and then we read about the brothers coming to Egypt to buy food. Yosef is as, acting as a stranger and towards the end we read about them coming a second time with Benjamin and Benjamin is found to be a thief because the gavlet the, the, uh, Joseph's gavlet was found in his sack and they all returned back to Egypt to plea and for the life of Benjamin as they know that Jacob will not be able to bear the news that Benjamin is dead. This is a very short summary of this week's portion which is loaded with hints and, and deeper meanings. I want to concentrate for as much as the time allows, right at the beginning first. We read about in, ver in, in page 268 or 269, verse 8, chapter 41, verse 8. The text reads the, fo in the, the following. In the morning, his mind was buzzing with agitation. So he sent messengers and called all the sorcerers of Egypt and all its sages. Pharaoh related his dreams to them, but no one interpreted them satisfactorily for Pharaoh. Egypt at the time was the center of sorcery and witchcraft. Dream interpretation is in the same category. So there was no better place to for an interpretation to the dreams. Yet, when he sends out to all the top-notch Harvard graduates to see if they can explain the two dreams of seven fat cows, seven skin cows, seven full ears of corn, and seven skinny corn ears of corn, no one can interpret them. And then we read later on that Joseph is the one who is able to explain the dreams that it refers to seven full years and seven skin years and that the fact that uh, they appear twice, Yosef says, is to remind you that God is about to bring the, in the meaning of the dream immediately and therefore you have to do such and such. There is a very um, important question that everybody is asking and that is, how is it possible that such a simple answer wasn't offered by any of the sorcerers and the dream interpreters? After all, the dream interpreters are professionals and they know how to explain a dream. And the dream actually was very simply interpreted. The cows is about meat. The, ear, the, corn of, the ears of corn the, uh, is food. It's all about agriculture. 
ha and seven, meaning seven seasons. Why is this that no one can come up with the idea that there will be seven, there will be seven years of plentiful and seven years of famine? How come they did not uh, be, were not able to answer, to explain that? Rashi explains the following. Rashi says that they actually did interpret them as the text read and it did not enter his ears, meaning he refused to accept them. Rashi says that they told him that the seven fat cows represent seven good daughters that will be born to you. Soon you will be blessed with seven daughters and the seven skinny cows represent seven daughters which you're going to be losing. They will die. And another one, the, the, that's what Rashi says, and they, Rashi explains that Pharaoh refused to accept them. In other words, they did offer some interpretations, but Pharaoh says, no, it doesn't make sense. I do not believe that's what it means. The Medrash, adds more that Rashi did not bring. The Medrash says that the seven fat cows represent seven daughters, seven skinny cows represent seven daughters that are gonna die, but the seven ears of corn represent seven different kingdoms that he will conquer, and seven skinny ears of corn represent seven kingdom which will rebel against you. In other words, you're going to gain control over seven new countries and you're going to lose control and they will rebel against you in seven different places. That's what the matter says they told Pharaoh. Rashi chose only the first part, he omitted the second part. If we have time, we'll, uh, we'll be able to understand why. I'm going to show with you uh, other interpretations before I show with you how the Rebbe explains the whole story. The Bechaye, Rabbeinu Bechaye, a very famous commentator is asking, why is it that they did not, the sorcerers could not say that fat cows represent plentiful of food and seven fat, healthy ears of corn represent good agricultural seasons. It makes sense. No, the only reason they were not able to interpret it and instead they talked about daughters and talked about kingdoms is because God put it in their mouth so that Joseph should be the one to interpret it. In other words, the Baha'i says God intervened and it's not a natural phenomena that they did not interpret it correctly. Yosef knew as well as the other interpreters exactly what it means, except they were circumvented by God from telling the real explanation. That's the Baha'i. So Baha'i says God intervened and made sure. The Chizkuni says that they, their mistake was, that, in other words, what threw them off is the fact that there were two dreams and the two dreams, even though had the same number and the same motif, the same theme, that there were seven good and healthy and then came seven skinny and ate them up mm -hmm. or, or killed them. However, because it's about cow and about ears of corn. This, this is, no, my Zoom doesn't work. Let me, let me go. My, my Zoom doesn't know. So, even though that they were the same motif of the seven cows and the seven ears of corn, yet the inter their sorcerers and the dream interpreters understood it to be separate stories daughters and kingdoms. Yosef, his ingenuity was that he knew that it refers to the same exact thing. And that's why they could not explain that about years of plentiful and years of famine because they needed to find another explanation to the second dream. And in that way, they threw them off. And that's, that's the wisdom of Yosef to be able to say that both dreams refer to the same exact event that's about to happen. Then comes the Ababbenel. The Ababbenel says that dreams never 
it, it tells the story the way it is. Dreams have been the way they are interpreted is by hinting to something else. And therefore, if the dream is very obvious and simple, the interpretation cannot be that obvious and simple. So since it's talking about food, cows is meat, steak, and ears of corn is wheat and, 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 and food, grain, yet they had not thought that it refers to seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. They needed to interpret it on something else daughters, kingdoms, they needed to find something that it hints to and not the direct, a simple interpretation of it. Yosef's wisdom was that he felt that it refers to the way it was dreamt, which is exactly what they dreamt, he felt dreamt about cows and corns of ears of corn, which is grain, food, and uh, having abundance of, of, of food. The Rebbe asks that Rashi does not address the question, how is it possible that they did not come up with the simple explanation as Joseph did? And not only that, Pharaoh is praising Joseph as later on in, in, the, in the later verse we read that he says to Joseph, there is no one as smart and wise as you are. What is so ingenious about the interpretation? After all, we're talking about food. Ears of corn is grain, cows is food. Why? They provide milk, they provide the, the meat. How is it possible that the other dream interpreters did not come up with this idea? And Rashi bothers to tell us what they did come up with, which was about daughters and uh, it's about kingdoms. Why would they not talk in unable to explain it in a simple way. Of course, we had an explanation. One explanation was that God intervened. Another explanation that the dream not interpreted in the natural way. The Rebbe says in the text, in the simple text, you find quite the contrary. Yosef had dreams, Jacob had dreams, and always they were interpreted in the literal way. They were not hinting to something else. So all the answers that I brought before, they are not following the simple text. And the Rebbe says, therefore, that Rashi explained that in the way of the words that Rashi is saying. And we can understand that by introducing one more question. When Joseph is interpreting the dreams, he suddenly starts advising Pharaoh what to do. If you read in text, page... Uh, and, <clears throat> page 272 or 273 in the English, uh, chapter 41, verse 29, suddenly he start telling him, I'm sorry, a little farther, he's telling him in verse 33, he says to him, and now Pharaoh should select a person who is understanding and wise and appoint them over the land of Egypt. Pharaoh should enact that the appointed officials over the land and prepare the land for, of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. He start telling Pharaoh what to do and how to manage his kingdom. One can ask, how dare someone who was not appointed by the king, someone who in fact was a slave and a prisoner, is able to turn to Pharaoh and tell him how to manage his country. This is outright uh, disrespect and so to say, um, deserve even a, to be punished by speaking when he was not asked in front of Pharaoh. Where did Joseph got the idea, the audacity, that after he was interpreting the dreams, he starting to teach him what to do and how to prepare for the years of famine? Says the Rebbe, the, the reason it was said, the reason Joseph tells Pharaoh what to do is because that is the, in, the, in the ingenuity of Yosef. Yosef was able to, this is part of the interpretations of the dream themselves. Says the Rebbe, there was one iota, one little thing that the, no one of the dream interpreters could come up with. 
Yosef was able to solve that issue by telling Pharaoh what to do. And here is the problem. When you read the text, in the dream, we see that there were seven fat cows coming out of the river and they stood by the river bank. And then, here is the text. Verse 3 and chapter 51, the text reads, and then, the um, verse 3, I'm trying to find it. Then look, seven, ug seven other ugly looking thin cows were coming up after them from the Nile and they stood besides the other cows on the bank of the Nile. In other words, there was a point of 14 cows standing next to each other. There were seven cows, fat, healthy cows came up from the river, standing by the Nile River. Then another seven thin, skinny, ugly looking cows coming up from the Nile, standing next to the seven fat cows, and then they eat up all the seven fat cows. The dream interpreters had a problem. How do you put all 14 cows beside each other? After all, if it talks about agricultural seasons as the ears of corn or the fat cows, it should be seven years and then another seven years, but not never both sets at the same time. Either you have abundant, you have plenty, or you have famine and you have nothing, but you can't have both at the same time. That's why they came up with seven daughters because Pharaoh had many women. He can have seven daughters in one year, and he can lose seven daughters from other seven wives. That's why Rashi omitted the story of the countries because it's very difficult to explain that Pharaoh is going to wage war on seven different countries in the same time. But Rashi brought the idea that seven fat seven daughters he's going to gain and seven daughters is going to lose because their problem it was one technical issue. How do you put seven and seven next to each other? When you talk about daughters, you can lose seven daughters at the same time. You have seven new daughters, assuming Pharaoh had a lot of wives and a lot, a lot of concubines. Yosef explained that it refers to actually seven years of plentiful and seven years of famine. And actually it's about agricultural seasons that come one after the other. However, he tells Pharaoh, you know why they stood next to each other? Because God wants you to bear in mind the famine that's about to happen. And therefore, the entire time of the plentiful, the seven years to where God is blessed, the country with lots of food should be saved and put aside for the years of the famine. So you always bear in mind the seven years of famine. And in that way, Pharaoh says to Yosef, I'm so impressed that there is no one who is as genius as you are to come up with a solution. And that explains why Yosef is giving him advice. He's actually not giving him advice. Yosef has no right as a slave, as a prisoner, has no right to tell Pharaoh to run his country. He just is able to explain to him the issue of seven cows that are fat, seven skinny cows standing beside each other, and yet it refers to 14 years seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. And that's why Pharaoh appoints Joseph. Joseph was the only one who was able to explain it. Says the Rebbe, that's what Rashi meant when he says that their interpretation did not enter Pharaoh's ear he had, they could not come up with a agriculture, that the means that it refers to a, an agricultural interpretation because he had a problem with the seven and seven standing beside each other. While we're dealing with these uh, uh, dreams, I want to um, show with you one more thing. And that's again the Rebbe's teaching. We have here uh, the dreams of Yos, uh, of Yo we have the dreams of Pharaoh. Pharaoh dreams, he stood by the river bank and suddenly from the river coming out seven fat cows, then another seven skinny cows. Then he sees seven ears of corn coming out of the uh, uh, river. That's a second dream. 
and seven skinny ears of corn. The Rebbe says that Joseph, last week we read about Joseph has a dream about gathering sheaves in the field and suddenly his bundle stood in the middle and he's circled by the sheaves of all the other brothers, all the siblings, and they bow down to his sheep. Says the Rebbe, this is the difference between Yosef, who has a purpose in life and knows that he is created for a reason, versus Pharaoh, who is here for the ride to enjoy life. Pharaoh, in his dreams, is not directly involved. In his dream, all he does is witnessing as the events take place. It's like a spectator, someone who is coming to watch the game. He's not a player, he's not, he's not in the show. He's watching a movie, his life is moving around. That's what he does, that's what he says. He watches the cows coming out of the river. Yosef's dreams, on the other hand, it's all about action. They're in the field gathering sheaves. Because for us, we need to know that we have a purpose in life and every moment should be filled with that purpose. It's not about watching how other people are playing. It's not about enjoying life by being, looking an, an, a, a, spectator, a spectator, but rather we must be a partner. We are players, we are in the field and we constantly be, need to be alerted. One more point about this uh, story of the dreams and there's many more, I just chose three. Yosef tell Pharaoh that the reason this, the dreams were repeated is because it will happen immediately. God is not giving you time to prepare. It is happening right away. Here it is in the text, and then I'll ask a question. We read um, verse 32, it's on page 273, verse 32, same chapter 41, Concerning the repetition of the dream to Pharaoh, this is because the matter is ready before God and God is quickly going to carry it out. So God is giving him one message, but he expressed the message in two separate dreams. One is about the cows, the second is about the ears of corn. Why do you need two if they all mean the same? because God wants you to know that it's starting now. There is no counting till 10, there is no another season, there is no next year, another year to come. It's right here and right now. As the re all the commentators are asking, last week we studied about Joseph's dreams, and over there, there were two dreams that seemingly are about the same interpretation. Joseph dreamt about gathering sheaves in the field and suddenly all the sheaves of the, all the bundles of the brothers are bound down to him. And, and he shares it with them. They all know what it means. It means that they're going to bow down to Joseph. And then he comes back with a second dream that suddenly he's outdoor and suddenly the sun, the moon and 11 stars are bowing down to him. It's all about bowing down to Joseph. We don't ask there, why is there a repeat of the same dream? After all, it's all about bowing down to him. He's going to be the ruler. How come we're not asking, why is there is repeat? And in addition, the interpretation of the dream took over 20 years. It took actually 22 years to materialize. If you say that a repeat of a dream, sometimes is not about something new, it's all about the speed that it will happen immediately. We see last week, just a portion ago, we read about a, a dream that had the same purpose to remind the brothers and let them know that he's going to rule and they're going to bow down to him. And yet, it repeated twice and we don't see that it happened immediately. So here are some different explanations and then I'll tell, show with you the Rebbe's explanation. Other explanations, some say that it appears, it uh, comes uh, to happen quick only when two dreams happen in the same night. Pharaoh, we read that he had a dream, he went to sleep, and then he had a dream again. So it was the same night, that's when it comes to tell us that it will happen immediately. Yosef, we don't read that it happened the same night, and actually it didn't. 
He told him the first dream. Then a couple of nights later, he dreamed the second dream. So when you have two separate dreams, it's not going to happen quick if it doesn't happen at the same night. The Rebbe is asking, the first question is, uh, we don't find that Yosef tell Pharaoh that the repetition had to happen in the same night. That's why it's happening right away. He says to him, because the dream was repeated, God wants to let you know that it happened in, immediately. So why is this, where do we take the idea that it only if it happens the same night? The second the Rebbe says, how come, excuse me, just a minute. Can you go, someone is by the door is taking. Says the Rebbe that actually the two dreams by Yosef are not the same and they actually refer to two different events because later on in this week's portion, so let's start. The dreams themselves says that we are not the same because the first dream is dreaming about the sheaves of his brothers. His father and mother are not part of the equation. And then the second time around when he dreams is the sun and the moon and 11 stars. Now it's his father and mother. It's not actually his mother, his mother is long dead. It's his stepmother, Bilha, his, um, uh, his, his mother's maid who raised them. So here, now it's not the same because the first one is, is not with the parents. The second one is with father and mother. If you actually look later on when it happened and it's in this week's portion, we read about the 11 brothers coming before Yosef and bowing down. And the Torah says that Yosef remembered the dreams he dreamt to them. In other words, the first dream happened the first time around, only the brothers bowing down to him. And then later when he reveals himself and they go back to bring Jacob and his wives, now they all come back. And here, the 11 brothers, plus father and mother, all bow down to him. Says the Rebbe, Therefore, the question it doesn't even apply because by Yosef, it wasn't a repeat of the same dream. It was two different dreams uh, that came for the purpose of two different events. The first event is only the brothers are going bow, to bow down as we read in this expulsion, the first time they arrive in Egypt. The second event is when they came back with Jacob and his wives. Now it's father and mother, the sun and the represented in a dream as a sun and a moon that will come to bow down to you. So this is the, all the time that I have. This is just the, from the beginning of this week's portion, uh, some of the gems that uh, we can learn from, from the Torah portion. Again, I want to wish everyone happy Hanukkah, and I hope to see you uh, anytime possible, every morning at 8, Friday night at 7, Shabbat morning at 10 o'clock, and uh, hopefully next week we'll resume to a short Dvar Torah on Sunday morning. Have, have a Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi. Good job.